everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show and today we have lots in store for you as usual such as how to keep cool when you're feeling really stressed with advice from Dr Estelle and Lewin. We'll be taking a look at me trying to relax in a flotation tank. We'll also be going to Wells and getting in touch with nature and we'll also be hearing from a sleep expert on how to get a good night's rest. Plus, for today's success story, I'll be chatting to Rob Kennedy, executive chef of the prestige Royal Military Academy Sandhurst. And as you can see, we have something a little different in the studio today, which we'll be talking about a bit later. Let's have a quick shot of them over there. Woohoo! What's all this about, I wonder? Now you're quiet. Now that I want you to make some noise. You're not <laughs> making any noise. Oh, is that my cue? But never Sorry. mind. <laughs> and also, as usual, we have the news. This time with Helena Shard and Ian Pelham Turner. Hello. Hello. Hi, How are you? How are you? I know you're excited We're about this. We're nitrogen really ice cream that we have I'm, in the studio. I'm waiting. Can I say, if, if there's any some. noises, it's not me wheezing tonight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Let's, let's, we've, we've already started. We have. Okay. We're, we're starting a royal, a royal slant as we, we normally do. Mm -hmm. So Duke and Duchess, obviously back from a successful yeah, three week. I know, I'm sure quite exhausting. And obviously Prince George as well. So that yeah. was a great success. They've, they've obviously come back and they've just celebrated their third uh, wedding, wedding anniversary, which is great, which is lovely. Never. Yeah. Third? Can you believe it? Third it is anniversary. Third. Yes. Yeah. We remember we were the there. wedding we remember so it well. well. We were, oh. you know, photographing with some great commissions. It was, oh, yeah, brilliant. Fantastic. Gosh, I couldn't believe years. it as well. Yeah. I thought, is it two? No, it's definitely three. three okay. <laughs> so um, that's exciting. Prince yeah. William, I think, has dashed off to his friend's um, wedding, which is in, where yeah. is it? It's in Without Kate. It, it's uh, Without, Without Kate. Kate. Yeah. yeah. Not it, tea? It's, it's a boys' one. Oh. Okay. So it, it's uh, William and Harry have gone off to the United States for one of their friends. Guy Penny, uh, that's which, it, which Guy Penny. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's an interesting time. And of course, um, it's been revealed in the past couple of days mm -hmm. that uh, Cressida has, nice. and Harry have decided to split. Yeah, you, you no. Uh, we're not so much of a we royal wedding know, that we we're talking know. about. And we do don't I believe, believe it. it? We don't believe it. Really? We, we don't, don't believe it at all. I think they've got right. inside information here. We um, think the next. Uh, uh, we, we still feel by the summer there will be a, a wedding announcement. Really? We really think so. Okay. We really think so. We think this is just smoke. We'll, we'll replay this part we'll if you're watch right. it. I know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And absolutely. See how reliable you are. And if someone is carrying us off, you know, <laughs> in the meantime, <laughs> if you see some beef eaters sort of coming for us, you know, because we're giving away royal secrets. Oh, okay. But I, no, I, I honestly think, I think uh, that uh, it happened exactly the same with William and Kate. It did. I remember that. Yeah. You know, that there was this three-month break where, where they were just trying to get some peace and quiet before it was announced. And I think it's exactly I the same thing. I think he's got now. as well, he's got official engagements to go off to. And I, don't, I think the family have thought they don't want Cresta to be chased around and, you know, hounded. So it's, it's a sort of good little mm. hush for them. OK, but well, we'll look forward to that. So it'll be nice yeah. to have another wedding. Absolutely. Yeah, we do as well. <laughs> Exciting. So, um, yeah, so Angela Lansbury um, is a dame. Which is fantastic. Oh, you look at me. Did <laughs> 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 you want to say no, I'm no. afraid my damehood is still in the post. <laughs> no, it's, it's lovely because she's, yeah. she's great. She's actually English, I didn't realise, but um, she is, uh, uh, was at the, I think, Windsor. So the mm -hmm. Queen gave her damehood. So she joins Dame Judi Dench and oh, nice. all our other, other people. So oh, it's exciting it, for her. She? She's really excited because yeah. she's, you know, to her. Uh, especially and I think she deserves special. it you know, at the moment. Yeah, she's she obviously, does. I mean, she's uh, she's still doing eight shows a week in the she West is. End. She does loads so, of charity know, I mean, work. She's, she's absolutely, yeah. you know, phenomenal for her age as well. She you know how old she is? She's 88. Really? Wow. 88. Is, is it, is, <laughs> I believe that. Close to my yeah, age. She seems like she's an age. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you she's remember her programme. I do, yeah. Really exciting. Yeah. And then we're talking Ian, about what you. about your favourite part of the show? Should we go to that first? Oh, the ice cream. The ice cream. Oh. Not the ice cream. I'm oh, not the ice cream. Oh, 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 the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> the other part of the oh, favourite part of the show. Oh, the fitness. The fitness. Get down the on the fitness. floor. Oh, oh, well, no. I'm starting to think he's got a bit of a crush on Jane, actually. He really, <laughs> he really looks forward to this. Should we go to our video? Before? Okay, so let's go to quickly to Jane's um, fitness tip of the day, and then we'll be back with some more news. Hi everyone, today in our fitness top tips I'm going to show you how to tone up your legs and your bum 
with two really great basic exercises, but I'm going to make sure that you know how to do them so that they're effective for you and they get you results okay. So the first one is a squat. So you stand with your feet hip width apart, draw your abdominals in and your shoulders back, and you lean forward from the waist and you put your weight back in your heels. Now a common mistake with squats is number one, the knees come too far forward. This is bad for your knees. Number two is to round out the back like this, okay? So you want to keep your back nice and straight and your weight's in your heels. You should be able to wiggle your toes. Another common mistake is to let the shoulders come into the ears. Try and keep your shoulders down, keep your abs engaged. So you breathe out, breathe in. Now if you're new to these, what I would do is start with some shallow ones in the right position and work your way to deeper squats. Okay, this shouldn't hurt your knees. If it hurts your knees, just sit back a little bit more. This is a really great exercise for the legs and the bum. You only need to do a few and you'll feel it. Okay, I'm gonna show you also a lunge. So you need to separate your feet, take a stride forward, up on your back toes, keep your chin up, keep your body nice and tall, and you go downwards. It's a lunge down. Think of it as a lunge down, not a lunge forward. Then you come up and lower yourself down. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of pushing the pelvis forward like this. Okay, so what you want to do is actually sit back slightly, put your weight in your front heel. The back leg is only actually for balance. You're working this leg here, okay? So you just go down and lift. And you can stay on one leg or you can alternate with each one, whatever you want to do. They're really effective. Strengthen and tone the legs and the bum. Okay, so do those every day, guys. Get in great shape for summer and I'll see you next time. Thanks once again to the lovely Jane. So we interrupted your news item. You yeah. did indeed. And, and it was I'm well just, worth I, it though, wasn't I, it? I, well, I'm just getting my breath back, Very as you know. <laughs> as, as always, I follow her avidly. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we talk about. You know? That's all we do in between the takes. Um, so, yes, the next uh, item that's come on is the latest Banksy. Um, Banksy did a, a, a wall graffiti for a, a club down in Bristol. Mm -hmm. uh, to actually raise funds for them because they needed £120,000 and he thought this would be sort of something that uh, they would find of great use. And then oh. the owners of the club decided to chip it off the wall <laughs> and have now lifted it inside. So, so, oh. so this Banksy has, has, has gone walksy. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a, sort of, there's a sort of thing, you know, should it go into the local museum or should it help raise funds for this? Uh, it's like a boys' club, I think, and they're in debt by 120000 Why can't it do both? Well, it raise could, money yeah, first and then go to the museum. Absolutely. Yeah. A bit of negotiating yeah. needs, right. needs. But um, that's quite exciting because he's, he's a guerrilla artist, isn't he? Yeah. No one's actually seen him. I and know, that's the most amazing so thing. Weird. And the, the actual. That's what's so intriguing, though, isn't it? it? Is, Maybe isn't if it? everyone knew who he and was, it'd be like, oh. It's such a fortune. Yeah. So the, the most recent one is The Embrace. I don't know if you've seen it. And you see no. a couple and they're hugging each other, but they're both looking at their mobile phones, which is very much modern day because mm. we're all sort of you know, always up on our phones and everything. So it's quite an exciting shot. Okay. Um, and and there's a new thing in London now where you can actually buy a Banksy or a part of it. Um, and you can actually buy a section of it. You're, you're looking yeah. at me amazed. Really? I, I, I am so full of knowledge tonight. <laughs> you know, it is. No, I'm not just I'm, tonight. I'm, 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 I'm like a cold up spring, <laughs> you know. Um, and the reality is, is um, you can actually buy a section of it. So uh, an, an average Banksy is about 150,000 mm. pounds. But what you can do now is you can buy it a, a, a section of it, like 2,000 pounds, and you actually own part of a Banksy. Oh. Have and you bought part of Banksy? Not yet, not yet. Not I, yet. I, 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 I'm, I'm thinking about buying part of an ice cream <laughs> machine. <laughs> I find that so weird, because who actually owns these Banksies? So if they're auctioning them off... It's, it's a bit just weird, isn't it? It's all behind a bit it. mysterious. Who's taking the money? Anyway, anyway to, yeah, to, we'll find it. You can to, find out for the next news item. Have to look into item. that. Yeah, and then so Britain's yeah. Got Talent. Mm. Oh, my favourite. I have to say I haven't watched it for a couple of weeks. I have. Yeah. Oh, every Saturday class. night, so still in that every Saturday it? night, I've, yeah. you know, I've got my granny stars, blanket on. <laughs> I'm, I'm sat on the bed, granny blanket on, ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to live. Um, and, and, we, and we're watching uh, Britain's Got Talent. Great acts at the minute, especially yeah. young oh, boys, with the most mm. amazing voices. But they're just really, it's such a positive thing. It was so sad, I thought, when The Voice finished. Did you watch The Voice? I didn't. 
I don't actually watch much TV because oh. I don't have that much time, you see. Oh, okay. I watch bits yeah, and pieces fine. here and there, but it's really bad, isn't it? I should start watching more TV. No. I mean, I was so sad when it finished because it's genuinely real good talent. Yeah. It's not about the look, it's about the voice. Mm -hmm. And um, But then Britain's Got Talent came on and it's all exciting. Now, now you're... Yeah. But it, it's, it's really good now because what, what they've now allowed is, is that some of the big acts that are coming, they're going through the semi-finals this year, they're coming from all over the world now. Yeah. Because they now recognise that the British version of Britain's Got Talent, well, there's only one version of Britain's Got Talent, <laughs> but um, that the British version is the top version in the world and they all want to be showcased on oh, this right. on this program, well, that's good to know, isn't it? And obviously, yeah. you know, um, yeah. uh, you know, they're, they're Simon Cowell, you know, he's pushing it. He's uh, just about to start X Factor again as well. Yeah. Um, so all these things. I think you know, everyone wants Simon Cowell because they want to be signed up. Absolutely. By do so that everyone travels. Are you going to stay with us to try yes. some ice cream? Oh. We're going to go to a quick oh. break. Oh. Oh. Finish. Sorry, sorry. Are you twisting my arm? To, <laughs> we're going to take a look at ice cream with a twist. So do join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show. Now, before we take a look at some ice cream with a twist, let's see how I got on in a flotation tank where I was challenged not to do a thing for one whole hour. I'm here with Peter Bell from Floatworks and he's the manager here and we were having a bit of a conversation before because I, the first thing I said to him was I'm only going to do this for about 20 minutes or half an hour and you said to me Peter <laughs> are you what have you got to do afterwards are you, are you going to somewhere else you got another appointment because you really need an hour you do need to have a, you know you expose your bodies to this environment and your senses to this environment and it'll have an effect the, the normal way I re normally relax is um, by going to a park somewhere and just sitting and looking at nature. So s this is something completely different for me. Now, where did the idea of Floatworks come from in the first place? So I mean, Floatworks, I mean, that's the name of the business and floating is what we do. But the actual flotation therapy, that's something that originated for research done in the 50s in America. Um, psychologists suddenly just decided to think, what happens to the brain if we take away external input. Where flotation comes in and particularly why it seems to be on trend now and you know thousands of people come here every year, uh, sorry, excuse me, every, every month um, and, uh, and on, over a year so it's obviously we're talking about tens and tens of thousands and then worldwide there's a trend of people using flotation tanks so why is it important? It's, well it seems to be the opposite of all this sensory overload, it's, a, it's an underload, it's a place where you can go where you're not going to be distracted by your phone or the internet. Um, and after a while, because you're floating in this silky, warm Epsom salt solution, and when you're comfortable, you turn the light off, and then after a while, the music goes to silence. Then you're left in this kind of space that you've never really been with before, where it's just you, and it's just your thoughts, and nothing else will distract you. I'm going to try my best, Peter, because yeah. I'm not used to doing nothing for a whole hour, I have to admit. Yeah because I'm a person that's all running around all over the place and like you said, always forward thinking, thinking of what I'm going to do next. Even I speak very quickly as well as the viewers know. So this, this will be a bit of a challenge for me. Yeah, well, um, I'm up for the challenge. I mean, what I'd say is that as it's your first time and you are quite a busy person, just take it easy, don't expect too much. The more you expect of it, perhaps the less, you'll be more in your mind space, so to speak, and more, perhaps the less you'll get. Who knows, you might, might be surprised. All right, viewers, so I'm going to do nothing for a whole hour and I'll see how I am afterwards. Maybe I won't be able to do any more work today, I have to see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see, okay, let's go. about my flotation experience. It feels a bit weird at first because um, 
you're kind of trying to get used to the water because there's so much Epsom salt in here that your body just kind of pops up when you start floating and then you just have to relax into it and the music's really nice and then there's a point where the music goes off and then you're just there with your own your own thoughts and everything which is which is quite nice actually i have to confess while i was calling the camera lady to come in i did check my emails <laughs> so on that respect as a challenge i failed miserably but this is a nice way to to relax and the salt actually what i really like is that the salt uh, makes your skin really nice and smooth so that's a really nice thing if you've got any injuries or any um, any muscle pain great for that we've got into early there welcome back everyone and i'm here with brad and damon of custom custom cream custom so I got cream. it right didn't yeah, i that's right. hello yeah. how are you Hi. Yeah. very well thank you okay so we have a very noisy machine contraption ice maker here what would you call machine. it yeah. machine yeah it's my machine the cryo okay. mixer all right, so how, how did the whole idea come about and what is actually different about this ice cream? Um, well, I designed this machine um, about three years ago because um, I wanted to start up a, an ice cream business, but I didn't want to just do generic ice cream biz business where you're just scooping out. So Why not? I, um, because um, it's too difficult. I want to do something new. I don't want to <laughs> okay. just, you know, I want something new something and Something out of the box. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I, I used my industrial design degree to, uh, to build this machine here, which is an instant ice cream machine. And I wanted to offer people a massive choice of flavors, not just a few that out of a, out of a, out of a tub. I wanted okay. to do thousands of flavors, which is what I've done. Okay. So how, how did you actually go about designing it and making it work and everything though? Because that must have been quite difficult. Well, I started off in a lab with um, my Nan's Ferguson record player, a drill. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's true. And, really? uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, some, some cream and liquid nitrogen. And I just found a process that um, was able to make the ice cream in the cup, which is the key to this, this machine. It makes an individual portion really quickly and it's quick. Okay. So when you've got a lot of people on a hot day want ice cream, it's quick and I can do it as fast as possible. Okay, now we'll be getting a demo mm. soon, won't we? You will be. Yeah. Okay. Now, Damon, how do you fit into all of this? Uh, well, I came along a little bit later. I, um, I met Brad uh, December 2012, um, mm -hmm. actually as a customer. Um, I, I oh. bumped into Brad in Hyde Park Winter Wonderland. Brad was uh, out in... I love it It's brilliant. It's okay. brilliant. But uh, Brad was there trying to sell ice cream in the middle of December, um, <laughs> which was yeah. uh, an interesting proposition. And I, 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 I love food. Um, I saw the sign for liquid nitrogen ice cream, wandered over, starting chatting to Brad. And it, it uh, I, I just loved the concept. And it, it just happened to sort of coincide with the time I was selling out of another business and I was looking for something new to, to invest into. So um, we got chatting and um, yeah, we've gone on from there really. And how's it been going with, with this Awful. adventure? <laughs> Awful. <laughs> we made it on TV, so yeah. it can't be that bad. <laughs> no. Um, no, I mean, it's been fantastic. We've, we've sort of, uh, during the course of last year, we've, we've sort of really, um, sort of invested into the business and, and we've basically uh, been working on a lot of corporate business um, so for the likes you know big big national brands mm -hmm. come uh, you know car launches um, we're about to do something with a toothpaste uh, brand national toothpaste brand very soon um, and um, we, we've basically this year we're going to be at a number of the big sporting events um, including sort of the oval cricket ground and wow. things like that so really from exciting. that perspective it's we, been brilliant but we've also now developed an international franchise proposition brilliant. and um, we're in talks uh, this month alone with five different countries we've got people coming over so hopefully you'll see us in uh, you know internationally very soon. Damon brings a lot to the business that I don't have a lot of corporate so I, I get on and I'm you know building the machines and just going out there but Damon brings we we, we, we work really well together because he's got loads of so many different skills yeah. So he's got a lot that I haven't, and I've got some that he doesn't as well. Okay. So are we going to get a demo? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. All right. I'll so we've got there. about three minutes left. Okay. Yeah, now you came across these, these two gentlemen, didn't you? You found them quite intriguing, I the did. whole business. I did for my sins. And, and, and I was just thinking that uh, I, I just thought that the, the photograph behind you both, it looks like the couple have just had your ice cream, doesn't it? <laughs> 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 it's got that wonderful look on their faces. <laughs> oh, from the word go, I was hooked on it. I, mean, I think it's a fabulous concept, a fabulous idea, this whole thing. You can carry on making um, it while it's all well, and, <laughs> and the reality is I love this dark chocolates uh, ice cream that you keep on producing. So. Is that what you'd like, is it? That's what I'd like. Oh, oh, it it has right. to be right. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll make, I'll okay. make my favourite. Right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my favourite. It's called, I've called it an ice dream. And okay. it's uh, peanut butter, Nutella, and our mm. special crunchy popcorn, which is another invention of mine. Yeah. Very, very nice. So what okay. I've done is I've, I've poured uh, organic cream into the cup. 
Um, and now I'm going to add some Nutella, every kid's favourite. And um, wine. Peanut butter, oh yeah. You're not a kid though. Right, so now what we do is we, so that went in as a, as a liquid. Yeah. And now what we're doing, we're <laughs> injecting liquid nitrogen and mixing it in a certain way to reduce the temperature from a liquid into a solid. Okay. So not only do you choose your flavours, which could be vast, you also get to choose your consistency of ice cream. So how do you like it, soft, medium or hard? Uh, medium. Medium, okay. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Sorry, I didn't even ask that's you. That's quite right. Oh, this is for you anyway. I, I often liken this noise <laughs> when I'm on the treadmill. It's a very Stop similar Ian. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's organic. Yes, it's all, all organic, yeah, apart from the Nutella. Apart from the Nutella. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got some really quirky flavours on the menu as well. We do like a bacon and maple syrup flavour. Bacon? Bacon, yep. Yeah. Candy bacon. Oh, that sounds a bit weird. Oh, it's really good. Is it good? Yeah, it's like salty caramel, but a breakfast version. So there's your ice cream. And then what we're going to do, this is my special invention, which is... <laughs> Come, come on, come and try some of this. Grab a spoon. There you go. I'm going to try the first one just to check. Quality control. Mm. <laughs> Let's have a try of this. There you go, guys. You, you wouldn't like this at home, Thank folks. You. And the topping <laughs> is Thank popcorn. You. It's crunchy oh, popcorn, yes. Crunchy popcorn. Salty popcorn. Crunchy popcorn. Mm. Crunchy popcorn. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Smells lovely as well, doesn't it? After you, no, 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 that no, was no, really no, quick. Yeah. I know you're dying. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You've been the one going on about it. Okay, all right. <laughs> oh, that's really good. So if you're lactose intolerant or you don't like cream, we do sorbets, mm. which are freshly made. And we've oh. won two uh, gold stars yeah. at the Great mm. Taste Awards this year. That is delicious. Mm. Uh, and also frozen cocktails. So you can have, uh, you can add any kind of alcohol good. to the ice cream or to a, a fruit juice and turn it into a frozen cocktail. And that's another part of the business that we're just working on as well. Just one last question before you go, because we must come into a break. What's been the biggest challenge for you both, and how have you gone past that? Because this is quite a unique thing. I think managing mm. the actual the, the rate of growth. I mean, we've gone from that's sort a of, good problem. Yeah, it's yeah. a brilliant problem. But I mean, yeah. genuinely, that's been one of the issues. I mean, we've we've gone from you know taking this this equipment and and patenting it you know globally and, and, and expanding, but we're now getting inquiries from all over the world and trying to actually react to that in a way that you're still feeling control of it i think it's probably one of the biggest challenges but that's you know it's, it's part of growing a business and it's exciting wow it's really exciting stuff thank you so much i mean thank i have you. to say it's really delicious it's really have you finished it ian no <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> why is everyone <laughs> picking on me tonight how many portions have you had uh, one <laughs> and a bit well thank you so much for bringing everything on no we worries. wish you all the best for Cheers. the future i'm sure we'll be lot. hearing a lot from you both thank you very much okay thank thank after thanks. the break we'll be speaking about how to keep calm when you're feeling very very stressed with advice from dr estelle doctor Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show. Now, how do you keep cool when everything around you seems to be going wrong? So we have Dr. Estelle with us to talk about this subject for today. How are you? Well, thanks. Good to be here. Thanks, Christine. Nice it's it's really good you. to have you on the show, Estelle, because I know there's uh, stress is something that a lot of people go through, they suffer mm. from, and mm. sometimes it can really get out of hand. Mm. Mm. Now, I know you deal with this like on a, on a daily basis. What mm. would you say the most common reasons are for people to get stressed? Well, I think that the most common reason is that for various reasons, people feel overwhelmed and mm. I say for various different reasons because you might be a person who has got a very hectic job mm -hmm. and you but you might also be a perfectionist or things that are going on around might upset you mm -hmm. and these it, it's it's a combination of being overwhelmed and becoming frustrated and upset that mm -hmm. give us that feeling of stress now, I was telling you earlier that um, I used to find it very hard to say no to people, mm. so especially in work situations. Mm. If I already had a lot on, um, I would still take on more if someone asked me because I don't, didn't like to say no, didn't want to let people down, mm. but that used to get me really, yeah. really upset and really stressed when mm. I reached a point where I couldn't take it anymore. Burst into tears and then be all right for a while and then start the cycle again. It was only when I learned to actually know my limits and yes. start to say, look, I can't do any more than what I'm doing now. Yes. Or even I'd look for a way to do it. And then I'd, I'll just have to be honest with people. Yeah, I think it's a common thing. 
that, that you can tell people as often as you like that um, if they carry on the way they are, they're going mm. to get burnout. But I'm, I think it's something that we have to experience for ourselves. And it's yeah. at that point where you're feeling, I just can't do any more, that you work out a, a way to work smart. Mm -hmm. and, and you choose to do the things that are most important and to save yourself the, 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 the stress and the anxiety that comes with taking on too much. Uh, sometimes when people are maybe overly stressed, they can't even think straight, mm. can they? So to sort of sit down and try and work out what to you know, leave behind, what to concentrate on can be quite yes. a daunting task. Yes. What would you say should be the first thing a person would do that is stressed, that they need to get their life back in order? Well, I think that when you get to that point, really, it's too late because mm. something needs to have been done before. Okay. And if there's something that I'm going to tell you about that should be done before, is done before, then you will have a tool to use in that situation. Oh, tell us. Yes. <laughs> so it's not uh, only the flotation tank that <laughs> we Which saw I've you in. Failed at <laughs> uh, but there, there, there should have been uh, some training to happen before the flotation mm -hmm. uh, tank. And that would be um, what uh, is called today very popular mindfulness training, mindfulness meditation because there really has been evidence to show that meditation done to music mm -hmm. and meditation in a way where you first gather together your body, your feelings, your thoughts, and you become really key, uh, calm, you focus on your breathing, mm -hmm. that is really one of the best ways of helping yourself to reduce the stress. I'll have to say, Peter did speak to him about that after, after the flotation <laughs> experience. <laughs> yeah, it would have been yeah, a wonderful yeah. opportunity to be yeah. doing this deep abdominal breathing, which right. is the key to stress reduction. Mm -hmm. Now, th is it different for each person? Because as I was saying to, to Peter on the video, I, I really relax, for example, when I'm outside somewhere, I'm mm in a nice park, um, mm. nature, I love nature, mm. and that mm. really relaxes me. So mm. it does, does it really depend on, on the person then? Because I know for some people it's like a massage, but I would prefer to be in a park, for example. Yes, I, I think there are individual differences, again, in what, um, what, what sort of environment helps you. I happen also to be the kind of person that likes to start the day with a walk in a park, mm. um, greeting the new day, and for me that's really important. But... Um, uh, I, I think people need to find what does it yeah, for them. Definitely. Mm. Okay, we're going to be speaking a little bit about sleep patterns as well, but yeah. we have a video f um, from a sleep expert on how to get a good night's rest. So let's take a look at this first. I'm about to go and meet Dr. Narina, who is a sleep and energy therapist, to learn more about my sleeping patterns and different techniques to improve my sleeping habits. So Joe, I understand you're you're interested in talking to me because you you're one of those one of millions of people actually who has problems switching off at the end of the day and probably sleeping as well. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I try to go to sleep at a decent time. For me, midnight, twelve o'clock. Okay. But I can't I can't switch off. So Joanna, there are quite a few things that could be influencing your sleep and giving you the sort of symptoms, if you like, that you're experiencing. Let me just ask you a few questions so we can see if we can really nail down what's at the core of it. My job is mainly on the computer, contacting people constantly. And I would say I spend that nine hours a day, mm. and at home, an additional of three, four hours. Overexposure to technology and information overload before you get into bed is likely to overload a part of the brain that gets involved in processing information when you sleep. So when you've described not being able to switch off the kind of noisiness of your sleep, that immediately tells me that your brain is processing too much information. So what should I do before I sleep then? Okay, I need to get you into some healthy habits. And don't channel surf, don't multitask, you know, play on your iPad or on your mobile phone while you're doing it. And use that to help to switch your mind off and to focus it, focus it into one thing. Ideally, you want your room, your, room, your bedroom needs to be a sanctuary and it needs to be as peaceful, no red flashing lights or buzzing noises or tweets or whatever. It needs to be as peaceful as possible so that when you, if you do wake up during the night, there's nothing there that's instantly waking your brain up and getting it overstimulated. I'm gonna teach you one of my favorite techniques now and it's really simple uh, and it's to do with breathing. 
And I want to do this for at least three reasons that I can think of right now. One of the things you want to do is to be able to get to sleep more easily, to switch your mind off. This breathing technique will help with that. The other thing you want is more energy. So using this breathing technique as you go through the day will help you to get more energy. And the other thing is um, you've painted a picture of, you know, your work is it's pretty stressful. It's quite intense. And if you use this breathing technique as you go through the day, it'll just help you to kind of de-stress as you go through the day so you don't get home at the end of the day feeling absolutely wrung out. All I want you to do is just to close your eyes for a few seconds and just notice your breathing. Pay attention to your chest, your belly. So tell me, what did you what did you notice about your breathing? I noticed that when I'm conscious about my breathing, I take deeper breath. Yeah, yeah, so rather than breathing into your chest and over inflating your chest, sort of like that, you want to feel your breathing dropping into your belly. And I often use the description of fat breathing. I hope you're encouraged, because what I want you to do is to hold on to this vision of at the end of this, what you can look forward to is more energy especially for your gym. You love going to the gym and you love your job. More energy for your job, more energy for life and lovely sleep. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Marina. Thank you, you're very um, welcome. I'll definitely give it a try and I'll update you after 21 days and hopefully I'll be sleeping like a baby then. I really hope so. Thank you. Thank you. So that was my session with Dr. Narina. I mean, I'm feeling much more relaxed right now, but one thing I really need to do is to learn to switch off. So no more mobile phones, no more computer right before bedtime. So hopefully I'll get a much better sleep. I am so guilty of that, checking emails mm. all the time mm. and stuff. But I do I actually I'm pretty much knocked out when I go to bed though. When I yes, do yes. What did you what did you think about the video? Oh, I though, thought it was, was excellent. I mm. thought it was excellent. I think it was in the nineteen sixties, nineteen seventies that um, Professor uh, Herbert Benson mm -hmm. discovered or started to talk about what he called the relaxation response which is exactly this. He was a cardiologist as well mm -hmm. and he noted that if um, patients did this kind of deep abdominal breathing that the doctor was speaking about, so you'd mm -hmm. breathe in through your mouth and then as you breathe in you push your abdomen out. So you can try it, Chrissy. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Press in, two, three, hold, two, three, out, two, three. So in, two, three, push abdomen out, mm -hmm. hold, two, three, out, two, three. And um, as she said, you want to drop your attention. So whatever you're worried about in your head, yeah. you, you want to forget about that and you want to focus on your tummy because then you're taking your attention far away from your head to your belly. And that's how it works. And even the breathing changes. And even the breathing changes right. with that deep abdominal breathing. And um, the professor used to say that as you breathe in, you count one. But as you breathe out, you say one. So it's you breathe in for one and then on the out breath, one. And okay. by saying the one, you also distract yourself from the feelings. Right, okay. And at the same, that's just another interesting thing. The same time as you're doing this, you're, rela you're focusing on relaxing the different parts of your body. And what he said, particularly when you relax your tongue, the thoughts will go away. Oh, the okay, we we'll have, we'll have to try that. <laughs> <laughs> now, just, just before you go, Estelle, as well, because obviously there are people that are going through stressful times in life, say, for example, um, maybe they've lost their job or there's a bereavement in the family mm -hmm. or going through depression, mm. that obviously is quite also stressful. Mm. It's not about having lots to do, it's more mm. about things that they're going through. Would, that, mm. would the techniques be different in that situation, would you, would you say? Well, those are really serious life events that happen. Mm. And I would, I would say that they can try the breathing, mm -hmm. but um, there's another, I think, another really useful set of techniques that um, uh, were devised by Professor Martin Seligman and he calls them PERMA, P-E-R-M-A. So you've got to try and remember that as mm -hmm. in permanent but P-E-R-M-A. P stands for having a positive emotion. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of thing that you get when you go for your walk. Right. It's good for us to feel a positive emotion every day. Mm -hmm then we need something that engages us. Very often people get that through their work. So I'm sure 
it looks to me as if you enjoy your job. I do. And what, you, what, what psychologists say, when you're enjoying your job, you get into something called flow. Mm -hmm. And with flow, you, you, can, you can just forget time passing. I'm sure the ice cream makers, <laughs> when they were devising their equipment, mm -hmm. um, got, were in flow, you know, and you just don't know that time passes. Now, that's very good for well-being. Mm -hmm. The other thing is relationship. There must be someone that you can have a chat to on a daily basis, okay. a good relationship. And then you've got to do something meaningful which goes beyond your job and may just be something that has is sort of allows you to express gratuitous joy or mm -hmm. engagement in other people's lives, so charity or something that you're not going to get anything back for. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the M, meaning, to bring meaning to your life. And finally, there's achievement. Okay. So you're a happy lady because you're achieving a wonderful show. And it's, it's not you. necessarily in that order, P-E-R-M-A, you know. Okay. But um, those are that. the five things. So anyone, even when you're going through a really stressful time in life, try to remember that you owe that to That's yourself. That's great advice. Thank you so much. We have run out of time, I'm afraid. But thank you so much for coming on and thank giving you some for fabulous advice me. for our viewers. Thank you so much. And do stay because after the break we have, we'll be chatting to a very interesting gentleman who has achieved a lot. So do join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Well, as the viewers know by now, there's nothing I like more than being close to nature. So today we're down in Wales and John here is going to be showing us around. Hi, John. Hi, How yeah, are you? I'm good, thanks. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're going to head down to the coast just here and it's um, an incredibly diverse um, zones of nature that live along the coast. They're massively resilient too. right now so we're in St Nons Bay which is um, if you look on a coast map of Wales is the big bite off the west coast of Wales and that's St Brides Bay which is this huge bay right behind us here um, and we're on the north coast of Pembrokeshire um, near the little place called St David's so this little square meter of um, rock in front of us pretty much has all the strategies that are employed by marine life on the coast and as I was saying they have to be super resilient to survive baking hot, sunny, hot days um, and winter storms where there's massive amounts of power in the waves hitting the rocks. So a limpet, say, for example, which everybody spends their childhood, if you're by the coast, trying to knock them off the rock and never really succeeding. They succeed because they're um, underneath this limpet here. Um, it's got a little homing scar. So it's a bare bit of rock with no lichens on it, no more seaweed so that it can get a really good watertight seal every time. So if, as soon as the tide starts going out, it will rush in there and get itself settled in so that it's nice and secure until um, the next high tide. So they have a s small, strong strategy, whereas seaweed, as you can see here, survives by having a really good hold fast, which is the um, little bit right, right at the base of the seaweed there. Really strong hold fast to hold on really, really well, and then super flexible, so it's a bit like but like when you're coast, when we're out coast steering, we teach you people to be loose and relaxed around the water rather than trying to be small and strong and then actually you survive a lot better. A lot of people in London and busy cities, they suffer from depression, they're very stressed. Do you think it's good for them to come here sometimes just to unwind a bit? Definitely. I think there's been research done on people that live on the east coast of a country and that those that live on the west have a much more um, forward thinking outlook on life and a bit happier. And seeing the sun set every day just makes you feel good.
welcome back. So now we have Rob Kennedy with us. Hello, Rob. Hi, Chrissy. How are you? <laughs> I'm well. How are you? Brilliant. And I've got a bit of a list here. I have to read <laughs> all this out. So, Rob, you're an executive chef of the Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst. That's correct. You manage the menus for Royal Family Visits, Senior Dignitaries and World Leaders. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you have over 75 culinary awards. Yes, indeed. Including 20 gold medals. And you've also raised over £30,000 for UK charities. Very close to my heart, that. That's amazing. So tell us how, how this all started. Yeah, well, it's, uh, firstly, the ice cream was great. <laughs> and listening to stress worked so well with my job. Oh, Really off that. But um, okay. it started at a young age. You know, every kid's interested in licking the bowl out, making pastry with their grandparents. And really, that's where it started for me. Okay. In the kitchen um, with my grandmother on the farm. It's a really kind of oh, nice, nice story behind it. And then yeah. sh slowly but surely, I just started cooking at home and just loved it. Had a real passion for it. So... Mm. It's, it's, it's never stopped me and you know I'm at the, the peak of my career now I'm, I'm cooking some great food in a wonderful location. But how, how did you jump from just doing things at home and for family and stuff to doing the things that you're doing today because that must be quite a journey. Yeah it was a long journey. Um, I went through the, the, the process of training and work experience. I can remember my first work experience job um, in Germany actually because my, my father was in the forces. I walked mm -hmm. into the kitchen and they said to me um, would you mind looking after the strawberries? And it was taking the heads, the green tops off 2,000 strawberries. Oh, and I said to myself, Chrissy, do I really <laughs> want to be a, you know, a professional chef? And I stuck with it. And I always tell that story. And I think yeah. if you stick with something, you can achieve. And, and that's what I've done. Mm -hmm. And what about all these awards that you've won? How did, yeah. you, how did you get that? <laughs> well, at the culinary do? world, we do have an Olympics. And, and we have this year the, the World Championships. Um, in Luxembourg and there's many many competitions that happen throughout the UK and some fantastic chefs and young chefs attend mm -hmm. and um, about 10 years ago I, I went on to the, the competition circuit and picked up a few chef of the years and a few medals wow. and uh, international awards now as well so it's it's great it's um, inspires chefs as well mm -hmm. um, which is fantastic for, for the business. Now the, the kind of menus that you put together and the food that you cook it is affordable isn't it for like the every, everyday person would you say? Yeah I think that touches people because budget is is important and people don't have a lot of money to, to, to spend on on wonderful food but in all honesty I'm sure you must cook at home as well. I do. Great <laughs> and we can exchange recipes maybe. I don't know about that I'm scared to exchange challenge. recipes with you. Yeah. It, I think it's about honest food mm -hmm. you know go into your local market your local shops um, traditional local source produce that that's not too difficult but you can concentrate on food Re really well and make them flavours work but make mm. it dress nice make it look nice and food's like fashion yeah I think definitely now what obviously it all sounds really great what you've achieved and everything but obviously you must have gone through some difficult moments mm. where maybe things got stressful yeah. difficult maybe you know maybe yeah. you thought that maybe it wasn't working out for you how did you what, what some of the things that you went through and how did you get past that I think uh, f for me, when, when you're put in a corner, you feel you're, you're very you're tight in the box and, and the, mm. the head's heavy. And, and with chefing, uh, in any career, if, you're, if you are stressed or you have a difficult moment, it does be, become, become heavy. And I, I used to take it all down. And the, the way I'd done was it was actually break it into five little boxes. So if there's five big things that were making me really stressed, mm. I'd break them into five little boxes and just tackle each one. At the time, and I found it a lot, a lot easier. And I spoke to the doctor. Earlier. Oh, they, they uh, that was a chat. <laughs> yeah, it was a good chat. And, and, and um, do you feel relaxed? I now? do. Yeah, <laughs> and I was doing the breathing actually earlier. Uh, but I think the, you know, if if you are in that si situation that's uncomfortable, the mm. breathing obviously helps. But I just tend to spread my my issues or my my, my things I need to tackle out, and that, that tends to work. Okay. And if we have any like budding young chefs watching now, or maybe. Yeah. They don't really have the support from, say, their family mm. because maybe they think they're wasting yeah. their time, but they really have a passion for, for cooking and things like that. What would you say to them? I'd say keep that passion because, it, you know, for a chef, and I've had it, you know, for, for all these years, and it, it is inside, it is very close to us, and, we you know, we are a unique breed, they say, as chefs, mm -hmm. but despite if you don't get any support, just, just keep going, stick with your, your career path, go with your dream, and, and, and just go through the thick times the hard times yeah. but there'll be plenty of good times as, as you progress and, and just, just mm -hmm. stick with it. And before you go Rob I have to ask you what's your favourite dish that you cook? Cornish lamb with a cream celeriac and a sprinkle of a haggis soil. Oh, he didn't even hesitate for that you just knew straight away Love didn't it. you? My favourite. <laughs> well thank you so much thank and plans you. for the future before you go? Um, concentrating on the England culinary team 
Um, I'm in that for Luxembourg's World Cup in November. Brilliant. Okay, so we'll be hearing lots more from you then. Going for gold. Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much. That was really interesting no talking to you. Well, we have reached the end of the show today and, you know, we had lots of fun things and, and good talks here, but I know that uh, being under stress can be a really difficult time, so don't feel like you're alone. The best thing you, you can do is actually to open up and speak to someone. So if you want more information about our guest tonight, you can visit the website, chriscbshow.tv, and also you can email me personally on chris at chriscbshow.tv. Dot TV. We're going to try some ice cream, aren't we? <laughs> I've been waiting. Well, I've for tried that. some ice cream, but Rob, Rob, you didn't try any, did you? Yet? <laughs> no. All right. Not so fair. we're going to we're going to have a bit of ice cream now. So we'll leave you to it and see you next time. Bye bye for now. One more. The look and the nod just seals it for me. To be fair, actually, I'm being a bit mean to my husband because he's really good at loading the dishwasher. In fact, he's very competitive about loading the dishwasher. And if I don't do it properly, he gets really cross. Oh, wow, well, my sister. Okay, can we cut, cut? Start okay, let's cut, let's start again. It's not scripted, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And they can disassociate the, 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 the way they're speaking and looking and smiling along with the way they're planning and plotting and thinking at the back, maybe in the way that you're doing, I don't know. <laughs>